Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire and I am finally returning to my favorite crafty things series for 2020. So far we've covered stamps and dies and today we're covering stencils and embossing folders. This series will continue probably through January of 2021 as I pull all of the products that I recommend together for you. Now this is supposed to be a fun way to kind of window shop and just look at some of the fun products that came out this year. I do recommend checking out my first video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to it up here in the top right, where I explain the series a bit more. Now, I will also be sharing ideas for the different types of stencils and embossing folders, and I will show some examples. In the case that you see an example on the screen, there will be a link to that video below in my YouTube description, and that will allow you to look for inspiration. So even if you're not shopping, no big deal. Say you have a stencil similar to the one I show, and I show a technique video idea, you can check out that technique video, and then maybe come up with ways to use the product that you have in that way. Also be sure to click over to my blog because all the information's there. It really is easier to follow there. And you can also get a link below to my crafty sales page. A lot of small businesses are having big end of year sales, and it might help you save a little bit if you are doing some shopping. Okay, so let's start with stencils. I think this was the year of stencils. So many companies came out with creative stencils, layering stencils, and more. And they have a great price point, and they can be used in so many more ways than stamps and dies. I think it's important, along with the stencil, to show you how it looks when you use it instead of just holding up the stencil. So I will be inking over each of the stencils very quickly and also showing examples. To do my stencil inking, I like to use the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat. This is a great tool that allows you to quickly clean up and also hold things kind of still as you ink them. I've used it in many videos and I'll talk about it more in a tools video soon. To do the quick inking over each of the stencils, I thought I would try out the new Honey Bee Palm Blender Brush. This is a large blending brush. It comes in a little case. And you can see you have all those soft bristles with a very smooth edge. I was curious about this, so I thought this was a good time to try it out. I'll talk about them more in the future. I still need to play with them quite a bit first. So here I'm using Distress Ink. I just thought that would be uh, the quickest and best way to do blending over the stencils. I needed to re-ink my ink pad here, so I added some re-inker and we're ready to go. The first stencil on my favorite crafty things list is the Gina K Ornamental Fan Stencil. I like the unique design of this. I haven't seen anything like this before. You can mask off different areas. If you look, you can actually see ornament shapes in the background, or you can mask off each fan. So they're each different colors. But I did a quick monoprint technique with it. If you look over here, you can see how I use the stencil over Distress Ink background. I have a link below to that video. So be sure to check that out. It's listed with the stencil below. And you can see how to do this fun, easy technique. Next up, we have the Brutus Monroe Rainbow Stencil. I've used this quite a few times and traced in each rainbow the different color. So I would have a rainbow background. So you can just use a marker to do that. Or here is another example where I use the new Speckled Egg Distress Ink for that soft background. Again, doing a technique where I use the Distress Ink and water along with stencil and a die cut machine to impress a pattern. That video is linked below too. Next, we have the Simon Hurley Stained Glass Stencil. I just got this one about a week ago and I've been playing around with it and I really like the detail of it. You could mask off maybe a border on a card or even just the different square areas and do them different colors. You can also ink it up and rotate the stencil like 45 degrees and ink it up some more for an offset pattern. Next, we have the Miss Ink Art Deco Stencil. What I like about this one, it has a beautiful pattern, but it also has a lot of open area. That way you can stamp over it with a detailed background stamp, or you can do a fun impression with an embossing mat in your die cut machine. So you gotta think about with stencils, some of them have more open area, some of them have more closed area, and it's nice to have a mix of both in your collection. So you can see the beautiful pattern that you get with this one with just some quick inking. 
Next up is the Brutus Monroe Lace Square Stencil. I like that this has that focal point in the center. You could mask it off or ink it up a different color. What I did with this one when I made a few sympathy cards with it is I made an impression with my embossing mat and my die cut machine. And then I inked over those raised areas, kind of like you're seeing me do here. And then I stamped a sentiment right there in the center. And I also added a few gems to go along with the pattern in the background. I like that it has that solid area in the middle as a focal point. Okay, next we have the Altenew Mighty Corner Stencil, and I'm crazy about this one. It seems like a very simple stencil. You could do each little V shape in a different color for a very simple background. But what I like is to ink it up one way and then rotate it to the other side and ink it up another way, and you can get this overlap pattern like you see here. I used white ink over a brightly inked background for this example, but you could do like a rainbow coming from the top and from the bottom. You really can get creative with a stencil like this. I do have plans to use this again in a video very soon, so stay tuned for that. I also think it's fun to have a nice simple plaid background stencil because it really goes with a lot of different styles of cards. You can also ink it up and then shift it and ink it up again to make it a more elaborate plaid if you want to. This one is from Erin Lee Creative. If you've never checked out her stencils, I encourage you to do so. She even has layering tie-dye stencils that are super cool. Okay, and for a more floral looking stencil, I really like the classical look of the Paper Rose Folk Flower Stencil. It's also got a unique look to it. Now, one time I did Versamark ink over this onto a gold metallic uh, cardstock, so a shiny gold cardstock. Then I clear heat embossed. So it gives you this look of engraved uh, pattern on the metallic cardstock. It's really cool. Here I'm just doing a quick, simple inking over the stencil, and you can see the soft, beautiful pattern that you can get. I also think this one would be beautiful with just a white embossing paste on white cardstock for a textured background. Next we have the Flora and Fauna Floral Stencil. When I got this one, I was really excited about the detail of the stencil. You can see how intricate it is. Here's an example where I simply put white uh, pigment ink over the stencil on a colored cardstock and you get the soft look that you see on the top of this card. That's one of my favorite ways to use stencil. Simple white pigment ink on colored cardstock. It gives a really muted look that uh, almost looks velvety. So I encourage you to try that if you haven't before. In this video I show lots of ideas for using a white pigment ink. Here we have the Ink on 3 Flora Stencil. This one is beautiful when you use it with cardstock and an embossing mat through your die cut machine. It basically impresses this pattern on your cardstock for a fun textured background. Here you can see how it is also beautiful with ink over it. And you could do maybe a clear embossing over this or clear glitter paste over that too. And just add a simple sentiment in the middle. You can mask off different areas to do different colors if you want to also. A newer stencil that I've enjoyed using lately is the Simon Says Stamp Boho Circle Stencil. I really like circle stencils and hope that uh, we see more on the market because it allows you to create a focal point on a card. Here I did white pigment ink over the colored stripes down the center and then a light gray around that on the white in the background. And then I have my sentiment right in the center creating that focal point. This is a beautiful stencil, looks great tone on tone in the background also, or as more of a focal point as I did here. And keep in mind, you could ink this up so it's off center on your card too. Now this is a bigger stencil. This is the Laurel stencil, and I think this one would be great for gel press. I'll link to a gel press video that I've done for kind of for beginners. I think this one would be perfect for it, and I like its larger size. Now I'm doing a little bit of inking over this here and you can see that it's a very intricate stencil with pieces that kind of stick out so they want to move when you use an inking brush over them. So with a stencil like this I would probably use pixie spray on it in the future. You just spray a little bit of this on the back of it, let it dry, and it's a repositionable adhesive that holds the stencil on your cardstock as you ink over it. 
Now this stencil I have used with the spray, so I didn't need to use the Pixie Spray, but this Pixie Spray is handy whenever using a detailed stencil that has areas kind of sticking up that would want to move as you ink over them. So that's a product to keep in mind too. Next we have the Trinity Stamp Slimline Lots of Dots Stencil Set. I'm a big fan of this one. It has four large stencils that are big enough for slimline cards or to use with the gel press, or you can use them on traditional cards too. It has the four different dot stencils. So we have the small dots, medium and large, and then this one that has uh, kind of that gradient pattern with the dots, I guess you would call that. I like that it has the different options wonderful because they go with a lot of different styles of cards. You can ink them, offset them, and ink them in a different color, or just use them for a tone-on-tone -tone background. You can even ink up two card fronts at once using one of these stencils, so I have used it for mass production in the past. For a bit of a different dot stencil, I really like the Tim Holtz Shifter Multi Dots. He has these shifter stencils where you can see the pattern, the opening, and then there are also the engraved pattern. So what you do is you ink up over the openings, then you shift the stencil so that what you inked up lines up with the engraved pattern on the stencil. So see, I'm gonna shift it over. It's hard to see, but I'm lining up the engraving with the dots I've already inked, and now I'll ink it in a different color. So by inking it and shifting it, you can do multi-color backgrounds very quickly and easily. And this stencil set has the three different size dots, so you have uh, the flexibility in using whatever works best for your card design. I have a couple different cloud stencils on my favorites list this year. The first is My Favorite Things Rolling Cloud Stencil. Now I've used different uh, cloud stencils in the past. The reason I really like this one is because the clouds are very fluffy, not just kind of a straight border across your card. These fun fluffy cards are great for your critter stamps, so you can create a playful card. You can also angle this so you have like an opening at the center between your clouds where you could do a rainbow or maybe a unicorn or a greeting there. And remember, you can rotate and even flip the stencil to get different cloud patterns to create your background just how you want it. The other cloud stencil that I really like is from the Rabbit Hole Designs and it's called Clouds in My Coffee. Now this has a completely different feel. So if you're creating cards with more realistic scene, I reach for this one. It also includes the mass for the clouds. So you could lay those clouds onto your background and spray over it to get the reverse look. So you can see here, I'm just kind of laying them out on a card so you can get an idea of the sizing. Now with this one, it also has along the edge your borders. So you can do a border of cloud inking like I'm doing here. But in the center of the stencil, it has the individual clouds. So you have the option to do either, which is really uh, great, especially from a stencil because stencils have a good price point. Here I'm just using white pigment ink and a blending brush on a colored cardstock just to show you the soft, realistic look you can get with these. So. Keep in mind there are different types of cloud stencils based on the style of the card that you want to create. So the creativity of this stencil reminds me that this year in 2020, it seems like uh, our favorite stamp companies have become creative with their stencils. And with one stencil, you can create incredible looks such as the Waffle Flower Infinite Petal Stencil. Single stencil creates a really cool background on a card. You can make it colorful, and there are many different looks you can get from one, depending on how you use it. I followed the guidelines engraved on the stencil to create the background you see here. You line it up, ink it, rotate it. Line it up, ink it, rotate it, and continue to do that to create a pattern. I like that one stencil, which has a great price point, can create many different looks. So be sure to check out that stencil if you haven't. Now there have been many incredible layering stencil sets this year too. One of my absolute favorites is the Pink Fresh Studio Sun Burst Stencils. Now you can go colorful with this or you could keep it kind of muted for a background. But the three stencils line up very easily to create a background like you see here. I did a video showing how easy it is to create that rainbow background, and the background is the focal point of the card, so all you have to do is add a sentiment and you're good to go. 
So layering stencils like this can be the absolute focus of your card. So you don't have to add anything else to it and it allows you to make a card quickly. Another layering stencil set that I think is good for a basic background, but you could step it up if you want to, is the Pink Fresh Studio Argyle stencil set. Now these line up very easily. You can also offset them to create a different pattern. Here's an example that I did that was very muted. I did the diamond shapes in a light gray and then did the lines white heat embossed. So I used the stencils to do a soft background just to add some interest to it. However, you could mask it off and do each row a different color and create something really colorful if you prefer. So with a stencil set like this, you can get creative on the many ways to use it. Now I think it's fun to also have a basic layering plaid stencil set like the Tailored Expressions plaid layering stencils. Now these have little holes on the edges that allow you to make sure you have things lined up. Now you can do the basic uh, plaid as intended with the stencils or you could do a stripe background. You could ink it up and then offset it to add more lines to your pattern or to your stripes. So don't just use a stencil how it was kind of originally intended. Do some offsetting and use multiple colors so you can get more out of the stencils you have. As I mentioned, there are many stencils out now that are more the focal point of a card, and a good example of that is the Trinity Stamps Slimline Layered Balloon Stencil Set. There are two large stencils in here, and the mass of the balloon, so you can do reverse if you prefer. You can use these on a traditional card size, or on a slimline card, or maybe a larger card like 5x7. So you can ink up one of the balloon stencils and then move on to the next one and you get a really quick balloon layered background. Now you could do each balloon a different color for something colorful. You could mask if you don't want it to show through. I just did a quick inking to show you an example. Uh, Lila and I made a few birthday cards for her friends using these. And keep in mind you can flip your stencils over to create additional balloons if you want to. All stencils, you can use both sides. Next, we have the Tailored Expressions Candles Layering Set. I actually have planned out a bunch of cards that I'm going to mass produce with this, so I have birthday cards ready throughout the year. Now, these again have the holes on the side that allow you to make sure you have them lined up just right. Now, I hear I'm inking over the first stencil, and then you can bring in the second one. You can line up the holes on the side, but what I've done here is I'm using the corner of my water media mat, so you can see the corner up there on the top left, that each time I put my stencil into that corner and it'll line up great for me to do the next layer of stenciling. I'm doing a really quick example here just with blues and greens, and then you can come in with the uh, candle portion. So what I'm doing here is lining up the candle portion with the holes on the side behind the last layer we did. I'll lay that down and now we can ink over that. Now you can get real creative with this, adding some sparkle over it, uh, glitter paste, anything. But I just wanted to show you a quick example. All you have to do is add a happy birthday sentiment strip across it and you have a fun birthday card. Easy for kids to make too. Another birthday layering stencil set that I thought was so clever is from Honey Bee. It's the birthday candle stencil set. There are three stencils. One inks up the candles, one inks up just the base of the candles, and one inks up just the flames. So you can use them together or separately. Here I'm inking up the base of the candles, and I'm just doing blue over that quickly, but you could do a rainbow of colors. Then I just line right back up with the flames, and I ink those with an orange. Remember there's the third stencil that has both of the openings on it. So you could then put that on top and ink over it with like a glitter paste so that all of your candles have some shimmer to it. Fun for a quick and colorful background. And all you have to do is add a die cut happy birthday on it and you're good to go. Now notice I just did the center there just to show you, but you could cover the entire background. Now one of my most used layering sets from this year is from Simon Says Stamp. It's the Falling Leaves stencil set. There are five stencils in the set. Four line up so that you ha can do different colors of leaves. You could even mask off to add even more colors. Then the fifth stencil is the pattern with everything open. So you can ink up all the different layers and then put this open stencil on top and then do like a glitter paste over it. 
And here's an example where I did that. I did the different stencils in different colors. Then I put the most open stencil on top and did glitter paste over that. So you can see the beautiful result you can get. Here's another example that I did and I used perfect pearls over it. And I have a link to that video below. So you can get a lot of different looks with these layering stencils. And the price point is really good compared to a large die set or a large stamp set. My other favorite layering background set I loaned out to somebody so I don't have it to show you but it is the P uh, Pretty Pink Posh Layered Leaves and Flowers stencil. So this is another one that lines up very nicely. So you have the three different stencils. You have the leaves, the flowers, and the berries. And remember you could skip the flowers or skip the berries just to have a leaf background. Here are a couple examples that I did. Here's one where I did a very soft background with some bright red berries. Kept it very simple, just adding that sentiment below it. That's one of the nice things about these layering stencil backgrounds. You don't need much else with it. Well, here's a different example where I just used the leaf stencil alone, inked it up with green, rotated it. Inked it up with a different green, rotated it. Inked it up with white and rotated it so that you could create that layered background look. And that's just using one of the stencils. Okay, next we have the Pink Fresh Studio Garden Floral Stencil Set. This is to create the major focal point on your card. There are the many different stencils included in the set, and all you have to do is ink over each one, lining up the edge of the stencil each time, and you can create this beautiful focal point on your card. They are much easier to line up than layering stamps. So if you struggle with layering stamps, definitely try out layering stencils. And the nice thing is, is you can vary the ink you put over the stencil or use multiple colors. So it allows you to build up a more realistic scene. And Pink Fresh Studio has several variations of this and there are coordinating dies available. So I encourage you to check them out if you're interested in doing layering stencils instead of layering stamps. All right, next we have the Altenew Tranquility Rose Stencil Set. Now I cut mine up so it would be easier for me to do the different parts and pieces to create a realistic flower and leaves. Now there is a stamp set that this coordinates with that stamps the outline, but I found that with many of the Altenew layering stencils, you don't need the stamp set if you just want to use the stencils. You gotta try it out. Some of them look better with the stamps, but this is a good example of one that can be used with or without the stamps. Now I did a few examples with this one and in the video I show what it looks like by itself and what it looks like with the stamps. So you can check that out. But here's an example where I did just the inking with the stencils. So there's no stamping on here besides the sentiment in the center. This again is very easy to line up because you can look right through the stencil to make sure it's lined up with your last image. And you can do a little more variation over the ink so it's darker in some spots and lighter in others, which is hard to do with stamps. Another layering stencil set that I really like is the Trinity Stamps Layered Park Tree Stencils. Now there are the masks included, which are the solid areas from the openings. So you could do like a sky around it if you wanted to. What's really neat about these particular stencils is they have engraved on the stencil where it lines up with the last image you inked. So you can just line it up so easily there's no guesswork with it. Now when you are inking over a stencil like this one with detailed little areas, especially like in this tree trunk, I do recommend turning your blending brush in both directions. So you rotate some in one way and then the other way so that you get into the nooks and crannies of the stencil. You don't want to leave those areas open. By going both directions you can get those details. You can see that beautiful trunk there. Now I'm just doing this very quickly. I didn't really plan out my colors, but you can see how easily, even when you're doing it quickly, you can create a beautiful layered look. So there you go. And by the way, I will talk about different ink blending tools and tools that work great with stencils in a future video. I also found 2020 to be the year of rainbows. And I think this is the original rainbow product that has a style that came out and it's from Erin Lee Creative. These somewhere rainbow stencils, there's a large one and a small one. And what's really cool is look at the bottom of the stencil. It has a cloud border you can use all built in together. The large stencil looks great on a sideways cards or horizontal card. 
or you can use it on a larger card or slim line. The smaller one looks great on a vertical card and I like having both options. What I did is I masked off each arch so I could ink up a bunch at once. And you have the clouds included which you could put right along the bottom of the rainbow. Okay, now that I've covered stencils, let's jump into embossing folders. I also feel like embossing folders have made a comeback this year and I'm very happy about that because again, they have a great price point and they can be used to create beautiful texture on your backgrounds or on your die cuts or more. I've done many technique videos on creative ways to use embossing folders, so I encourage you to check those out. One important point is embossing folders come in all shapes and sizes, so there are different sizes and thicknesses, which is really important to keep in mind. Now all of these embossing folders can be used with the different die cut machines out there. However, you'll have to change up the sandwich depending on the thickness. So I encourage you to try things out, check out the company's site for recommended sandwiches, but again, you should be able to use these with whatever die cut machine you have. So there you can see some of the 3D embossing folders are much thicker than the traditional embossing folders. Okay, my first recommendation is from Altenew. It's the angled mosaic. I like square embossing folders because you can put your cardstock in either direction and you can see the detail you get from this 3D embossing folder. Such beautiful texture and that is just on a simple piece of cardstock. I use this to add a little bit of texture to a one layer card. You can see it over there on the right. And when you tilt these in the light, they look really cool. Now most people use embossing folders with plain cardstock to get that texture, but keep in mind any embossing folders can be used with specialty cardstocks. Look how cool it looks with a simple piece of holographic cardstock. I'll link to the one that I use below, but any kind of metallic cardstocks or glossy cardstocks look great with embossing folders too. For today's video, I just used some cardstock scraps to demonstrate. Here we have the Tailored Expressions dotted lattice. This is a traditional embossing folder with a beautiful detailed background. Wonderful backdrop that's not too distracting from the focal point of your card. And this one looks good from the front and from the back, so you could use either on your card. Another traditional embossing folder that I've used a lot for mass producing is the Fun Stamper's Journey Big Dot. Now this one you could ink into the embossing folder first so you could get a background of color with white dots, or you could just do it for a tone on tone textured background. And again, you could use the front or the back, and you could even stamp little hearts onto those dots to build up the pattern. I also like seeing the embossing folders come in a larger size, so you can use them on slimline or 5x7 cards. This one's from Creative Expressions and it has the graduated dots, so that the dots get bigger out on the outside edge. It is a 3D embossing folder, so you don't just have raised and lowered areas, but you really have kind of like bumps, smooth bumps on the front of your card. 3D embossing folders are generally the ones that are the most impressive, but the traditional embossing folders add great texture too. Here's another 3D embossing folder. This is the Simons' Stamp Floral Field. It creates this beautiful floral background with lots of dimension to it because of that 3D feature. Now I did a video where I showed how you could ink the inside of the stencil with a brayer first, then just put in white cardstock and look at the beautiful background that you can get. So in addition to using plain cardstock and specialty cardstocks, you could use white cardstock but ink in your embossing folder first to get a standout background. That's really the focal point of the card. So keep in mind, embossing folders aren't just for a backdrop, they can be the focal point. The Memory Box Gracious Leaves Embossing Folder has a lot of subtle detail to it. It's nice as a backdrop. Now I used it on a holiday card, but you could definitely use this on non-holiday cards too. It's kind of hard to see here in this photo, but I used it on the light green background. If you check out the video with this example, you can definitely see the pattern when you tilt it in the light. Now a traditional embossing folder that I like this year is the Paper Rose Baby Blue Embossing Folder. This is again a nice subtle backdrop. You can see the detail of these leaves, but it's not too distracting from whatever you add on top of the card. 
Now if you're looking for an embossing folder that has a lot of wow to it, I definitely recommend this Alta New embossing folder. It's a 3D embossing folder. And this is just embossed on a cardstock scrap. And you can see the gorgeous detail that you get to it. You don't have to add much to it. But I did a video showing many ways to use this embossing folder, including inking in the stencil, inking the raised areas, lots of examples. So to be sure to check that out, not just for this embossing folder, but for ideas for any type of embossing folder. All right, there you have it, my favorite stencils and embossing folders from 2020. I will be back soon sharing, I believe, my favorite stamp die and stencil bundles from the year. Now, if you want to take a closer look at any of these products or the videos that uh, show the different examples I showed in the video, they are linked below with each product name. So you can check that out or go to my blog where it's much easier to follow because there are thumbnails there. To quickly find my blog, all you have to do is click here on the top right. And in the middle, I have links to the other My Favorite Crafty Things videos that I've done so far. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll return again soon and have a great day.